Welcome to Cram with Camila, where we cram for the RD exam. Now moving on to water soluble vitamins. The first one that I want to talk about is B1, also known as thiamine. Thiamine is, as I mentioned, water soluble, and turns out thiamine is lost as pH rises. So if you're cooking something that has thiamine, and then you say add some baking soda to it, you might lose the thiamine. <sighs> Craziness. Thiamine plays a role in metabolism of pyruvate. And did you know that when you increase the amount of carbs that you eat, you need to also increase your thiamine intake. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure thiamine levels are lower in people that drink a lot. Animal sources of thiamine would include pork, which is a very good source of thiamine, and also liver. When it comes to non-animal food sources, wheat germ and grains are good sources of thiamine. Thiamine deficiency may lead to tachycardia, when your heart just starts beating really, really fast, like ta 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 ta, -ta tachycardia. Also, this thing called foot drop, no idea what that is, berry berry, and memory loss, and muscle weakness. We talked about B1, now let's talk about B2. B2 is riboflavin. So riboflavin is another water-soluble vitamin that is actually destroyed under UV light. So when you think about milk, because milk is a good source of riboflavin, aka B2, usually milk comes in those opaque cartons instead of a glass jar to retain riboflavin. So every time we go to the store and we see the fancy glass jar milk, under UV lights, we lost all the riboflavin or some of the riboflavin in that milk. The more you know. B2 plays a role in energy and red cell production. And it looks like most sources of riboflavin or B2 come from animals, for example, milk, uh, different cuts of meat, liver, and even kidney. Riboflavin deficiency may lead to stomatitis, which is cracks in the corners of your mouth, shalosis, shalosis, which is cracked lips, and magenta tongue. And it also, deficiency may also impair growth. Let's talk about niacin, another water soluble vitamin that is essential for energy metabolism. Now, fun fact is that tryptophan is the precursor to niacin. So for example, people that say are on a strict vegetarian diet and they may not be getting enough niacin, they can actually get niacin from tryptophan because your body helps synthesize niacin out of tryptophan. Niacin is essential for metabolism of carbs, protein, and fat. Some animal sources of niacin include chicken and milk, and some non-animal sources include 
peanuts, cereals, and even yeast. You know what I remember? The deficiency of niacin has those four Ds. Dementia, diarrhea, dermatitis, and also pellagra. And you also get a big, beefy, red tongue. So we discussed that B2 gives you magenta tongue and B3 gives you a red, beefy tongue. And you also might have pigmented rushes. Now, pentothenic acid is very important for energy production. It functions as CoA or coenzyme A, and it plays a role in the synthesis of fatty acids. You may get pentothenic acid from several different sources, including legumes, grains, and different animal proteins. Because we get pentothenic acid from several different sources, deficiency is going to be very rare, but if it does occur, it may lead to paresthesia in the feet. B6 is also known as pyridoxin, and it plays an important role in amino acid metabolism. Some food sources of B6 include different meats, as well as yeast and corn. B6 deficiency can lead to anemia, dermatitis, glossitis, can lead to peripheral neuropathy, and even seizures. You know how people take biotin for their hair and nails? I'm sure there is a reason for it. What I do know, however, is that biotin plays a role in fatty acid synthesis, so therefore like energy metabolism, and it serves as a coenzyme. Food sources of biotin include eggs, liver, kidney meat, but not to worry because yeast is also a source of biotin. Deficiency can lead to glossitis, dermatitis, and also muscle pain. Let's talk about folate. And it's important for us to know that folate and folic acid are not exactly the same thing. Folic acid is the synthetic form. So folate is very important for DNA synthesis and formation of red blood cells. So do you know why pregnant women need to take multivitamins with folate is to prevent neurotube defects. Folate may be found in animal and plant sources. So for example, beans, in green leafy vegetables, and liver. Deficiency can lead to diarrhea, irritability, dyspnea, which I'm pretty sure is difficulty breathing, also can lead to megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. Let's talk about B12. I think B12 is so cool because usually B12 in the stomach, it's bound by intrinsic factor and then it goes into the small intestine where it's absorbed. Vitamin B12 is a coenzyme in protein synthesis and also 
it plays a role in the formation of red blood cells. The main sources of vitamin B12 are animal protein, including cheese, fish, milk, eggs, kidney, liver meats. That is why someone who is a strict vegan may need to supplement their B12. So you will notice that a lot of people that are vegan, they will take a B12 supplement. B12 deficiency can lead to anemia, can lead to macrocytic, megaloblastic anemia, can lead to pernicious anemia. And say if somebody has any type of surgery where they have to remove their stomach, so if they have a gastrectomy, that means they're not going to be producing the intrinsic factor, therefore they may become B12 deficient. Now let's talk about ascorbic acid, aka vitamin C. So we know that vitamin C, along with vitamin E, is also an antioxidant. And it's important for us to remember that vitamin C is easily destroyed. So for example, when you cut and peel vegetables, the vitamin C content might be oxidized and be destroyed. So if we eat foods that have vitamin C, it also may destroy it. But when you think about acidic versus alkaline, we have vitamin C in lemons. Lemons are acidic, so it's pretty resistant to acidic environment or conditions or, you know, solution. However, it gets destroyed in an alkaline solution. Now, the roles of vitamin C are super fun. So vitamin C plays a role in collagen synthesis. So anybody trying to have good skin out there, get your vitamin C on. What else? Aids in wound healing, which makes sense, right? Because collagen in your skin will help with the wounds. And it also does more, which I can't remember. Aids in iron absorption. So anybody that may be deficient in iron, have a vitamin C supplement with the iron. I'm pretty sure they tr could uh, triple the iron absorption. Of course, if you're taking an iron supplement, along with the vitamin C, consult with your physician. Don't go crazy taking a supplement in vitamin C because you might have too much iron and you don't want that. For food sources, dark green vegetables, citrus fruit, even potatoes. I'm pretty sure that even strawberries are a good source of vitamin C. Now, deficiency can lead to bleeding gums. So do you remember back in the day, they had a story of the sailors that they were out in the ocean all the time and they had scurvy because they didn't have vitamin C? Well, there it goes. Also may lead to poor wound healing, duh, because if you assist wound healing and you're not getting enough, you might have poor wound healing. And there is this thing called pe Petechiae, which is another condition in your skin. I'll insert a picture. How do you feel about vitamins? Ready to move on to minerals? Okay, so what happens is the hydrochloric acid denatures the proteins and then B12 happens. So, food sources. We know citrus fruit, but also say different darky darky. You know how people take biotin for their hair and nails? 